Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and uh, I've got my cat Shackleton sitting on my lap. He's just off camera. You might be able to hear him meowing loudly. Anyway, um, in this video, I want to talk all about the science behind the uh, recent uh, videos that I've discussed where we have an Arctic Ocean that can be covered not by sea ice, but by very, very thick ice shells up to a kilometer thick over the entire Arctic Ocean with um, fresh water underneath going down at least uh, below two and a half thousand meters uh, water depth from present day sea levels. So basically the uh, choke point is the Greenland Scotland Ridge. So with sea level 130 meters lower, you have no connection of the Arctic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean or through the Canadian Archipelago. To the Atlantic Ocean, the connection between the Atlantic Ocean and the Arctic Ocean is greatly reduced when you have the 130 meter sea level rise. And also when you have Ice, sheet, ice shelves extending out from the land that are a kilometer thick. Of course, 90% of them are underwater. So that would be, you know, if it's a kilometer thick ice shelf, 900 meters of that is underwater. Add that to the 130 meter lower sea level rise, and you could expect that there's choke points down to a kilometer below present day sea level rise. Now, we, have, we see erosional features a kilometer below the current sea level rise across the Arctic. You know, even on the ridges that extend close to the, the Lomasov Ridge, for example, that extends close to the Arctic, uh, close to the North Pole. You know, there's erosional and um, impressions in that, um, in that sea level, um, in those sediments that show that the ice extended deep down and basically cut off the flow of water to the Atlantic Ocean. The reason we know that there was fresh water is because of thorium-230. Now, whenever in salt water, there's uranium salts, you know, there's calcium, sodium, lots of different um, ions in the salt water, but there's also sulfur and also calcium and there's also dissolved uranium. And the amount of dissolved uranium is proportional to the salt content. And that dissolved uranium decays to 230 thorium. So that's produced in the water column where the salts are. And that goes into the sediments close to the site where it's formed relatively fast. So if we measure the um, sediments, the thorium 230 sediments that are um, in the in that are they're underneath a particular water column that tells us if the numbers are very very low it tells us that the water was fresh in the water column above so if we have a, a thousand meters of thick um, ice shelves that are extended from the coastal regions right out into the Arctic Ocean if they're over a seafloor of 2,000 meters depth say then that would reduce the 230 thorium by a half. If the water underneath that uh, ice shelf was also fresh, fresh water, then the thorium 230 would basically drop down to zero. So by doing, by looking at different levels, different layers within the ocean floor sediment across the Arctic Ocean, we can see the spatial extent and by looking at the different layers in the ice in the in the in the seafloor sediments we can get the the temporal information on you know look for the layers where there's no thorium 230 and we can say that those time periods had fresh water in the water column so from the from that data we see that the water mass in the Arctic Ocean was fresh down to at least two, two and a half thousand meters water depth. 
The calcium is also low. The sulfur is also low. The 230 thorium goes to zero. All those things show that there was no salt in that basin. And not only that, if we look at 10 beryllium um, in the sediments, and we see very, very low levels of 10 beryllium, we know that there is no connection to the atmosphere because beryllium is cosmogenic. So in other words, um, its, its, its source is is from the, the atmosphere. So there's, if there's a thick layer, a thick ice shelf, permanently covering the basin, then the beryllium levels will also be low. And all of these things have been seen in the entire Arctic Ocean, extending all the way down to the Greenland-Scotland Ridge. Okay, so the scars, the drag marks on the Lomonosov Ridge, the lack of calcium, the lack of sulfur, the lack of beryllium, and the lack specifically of thorium-230, when it's absent in the layers, in the sediment layers, we know it was fresh water. And you can figure out that, that there would have been about 9 million cubic kilometers of fresh water needed to cause these results. And this water, of course, this fresh water is stored in the oceans, under in the Arctic Ocean specifically, not on land, not as, right, it's stored as liquid water, not, not, as, not as ice bound um, water on land. Now, this huge mass of fresh water could then be delivered to the North Atlantic when the ice shells receded on very, very short time scales. Okay, so when the Arctic Ocean was blocked off from the Atlantic and Pacific, there was still about 1,200 cubic kilometers per year of fresh water going into the Arctic Ocean. That's the sort of glacial steady state rate. And that's assuming about 100 millimeters per year of precipitation and then also freshwater discharge from ice melt. So if that's going into the Arctic Ocean um, during the glacial steady state each year, how, you know, what volume of water is that? Well, the Amazon River, the annual discharge of the Amazon River is about six and a half thousand cubic kilometers a year. So the amount of fresh water going into the Arctic basin during during the glacial um, during the coldest periods of the of the glacial uh, periods, it's about 20% of the Amazon discharge. Now the volume under the ice shelves um, above the sea between the ice shelves and the seafloor is about nine and a half million cubic kilometers. But if you include the Norwegian Sea the um, Greenland Sea, the Iceland Sea, all the way down to the Greenland-Scotland Ridge, you need to add 2.8 million uh, cubic kilometers. So we get a total of about 12.3 million cubic kilometers of space, of volume. And if we're entering, if we're getting a 1,200 cubic kilometers per year, um, that would be about 8,000 years. You know, double the rate. I mean, these are ballpark numbers. It would be maybe 4,000 years. So once the... Arctic Basin is completely enclosed by the seafloor, the, uh, the, the land around because the sea level is 130 meters lower and the ice shells going deep down. It would take uh, on the order of thousands of years for the water to become completely fresh. Um, so, so this is, uh, you know, also the sea level, it affects everything. It affects the, the sea level because you know, we, we, have, we estimate what sea level is back at that time from the 18 oxygen uh, isotopes, the Del-18O. But these models only assume that the fresh water is stored as water on land in ice. You know, now it's sitting under the ice in the Arctic Ocean. Those sea, those sea levels were actually higher back in those periods than we think because of this new... Um, this new finding. So I'm going to just go through the scientific paper in detail now and uh, show you how all these things uh, come together. Okay. Okay, so this is a, a key image, but I'll get back to it um, shortly. Okay, and it looks like I'll take a second video to, to, to discuss this. So I've discussed the, um, this was the um, article 
you can just Google it. The Arctic Ocean was covered by a shelf ice and filled with fresh water. So this is the ice sheet. Now this is not sea ice, okay? This is not thin sea ice. This is the ice shelf that extended has extended out from all of the coastal regions and gone right up into the center of the Arctic Ocean. We know that from scrapes on the the bottom. So sea level's lower, so this is all landlocked here on the Pacific side, the Canadian Archipelago, and it's only the Greenland to Scotland Ridge um, where, you know, there's areas uh, where where the water could get through, but now when we have a kilometer thick ice shelf on top and it extends down, you know, almost a kilometer, then 90% um, of it extends underneath the water, then that blocks off the channels and all that fresh water going in here, over time the basin, you know, over a thousand years or more, the basin becomes completely fresh water. Okay, so let's look at the uh, couple things before I get to the paper. This is the view here, so completely blocked off here down to the Greenland uh, Scotland Ridge here. Okay, so so that would be the t the idea. Um, this is the basin. You can see the Lebon Lomonosov Ridge here. So let's look at how deep the water is there. Again, if you just Google use Google Images and look at Arctic seafloor, Arctic uh, Ocean bathymetry, you can get lots of images like this. Now I showed you in the last video how you can uh, go to go on Google Earth. Okay, and uh, look at for ocean, Google, Google Earth bathymetry, and you get the bathymetry of the ocean. And this is the Lomonosov Ridge, and you can see the water depth here by following the depth here. Okay, so there's regions here that are around a thousand, around a kilometer deep, even less. And there's large scars on here that, are, that were put there, 296 meters there, very shallow, very high region there. But you can see scars on the bottom as low as a kilometer deep. Okay, so we know that the, this part of the ocean was covered by thick ice shells, not by sea ice, okay? Uh, by very, very thick ice shelves that extended far out from land. Okay, so you can see that. Um, and the two time periods where we're, that we're looking at, where we, we have this fresh water, we have the absence of thorium in the sediment record, is um, marine isotope stage, MIS-4, in this period here, about, uh, you know, from, it's from about 40 to 50,000 years ago in this region, and also over here, a marine isotope 6, 150 to about 130,000 years years ago in that time period. This is the global mean sea level. If you go to sealevels.org, um, we can get rid of the temperature. This is the global mean sea level, and we can see that um, that in these periods, so, so 24,000 years ago, it was 133 meters below present day sea level. Okay, then there's this range here, this minimum here, about 87, 88 meters below sea level. That was 63,000 years ago. So if we go from about 50,000 years ago, this period here, this plateau here, this is when the isotope showed that there was um, no thorium-230. So this is one period. And down here in this period, from about 150,000 years ago, right here, down to about 130,000 years ago. In this period, there was also no thorium, thorium across the basin, so it was fresh water under the very, very thick ice shelves. And if you go, you can add the temperature here, um, the black line, and you can see how the temperature, the global temperature what uh, changed as the sea level changed, okay? So those are the periods that we're talking about. Now, this is the paper. Okay, um, this is a scientific peer-reviewed paper that is talking about, uh, you know, what's happened. So glacial episodes of a freshwater Arctic Ocean covered by a thick ice shelf. And I'll use another video to go into the details of this paper, but this is a key finding. If you look at the bathymetry, the blue area is all, is all at about a thousand uh, meters below present day sea level. So that was a basin where the water was trapped, but I'll do a whole video on this paper. It's so important. Thanks for listening.